All right, before we begin with testimony, let me just confirm with uh, Detective Wheeler here, who's now under oath. The court does have an exclusionary order in this case. In effect, have you observed or listened to any of the trial testimony that's taken place in this trial? No. Okay. So you have uh, followed that. You haven't discussed any of the testimony with anyone else or reviewed that with anyone from the state? No. Very well. Mr. Wixom, if you'd like to inquire on direct, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good morning, Detective Wheeler. Good morning. Could you please state and spell your full name for the record? Uh, Detective Eric Wheeler, E-R-I-C-W-H-E-E-L-E-R. -E -E Thank you. And can you please explain to the jury, where do you work? The Rexburg Police Department. How long have you worked there? Uh, 18 years. And what's your current rank? Detective. And what was your rank prior to becoming detective? Uh, patrol sergeant. And uh, how long were you a patrol sergeant? Well, approximately three or four years. And how long have you been a detective now? Uh, three years. So prior to that, were you a patrol officer? Yes, sir. Thank you. And just very briefly, for the jury's sake, will you please explain to them what's the basic post training that law enforcement receives? So I've, I've received my advanced and master certificate through Idaho post. And so it's, uh, you know, training that you have to go through in service type training. You have to go through the post Academy to get your basic certificate. And, uh, and it entails everything from traffic, criminal code, search and seizure, laws of arrest, arrest techniques, firearms, those sort of things. Thank you. And I want to draw your attention um, to almost, almost five years ago, uh, back to June 9th of 2020. Were you involved in any kind of search uh, that occurred in Fremont County? Yes, I was. What search was that? It was the uh, search warrant that we were asked to help with at the 202 North 1900 East, Fremont County, uh, the Chad Daybell property. And what was the subject of the search? Uh, my role in the search was to um, maintain scene security, safety, traffic and crowd control while investigators conducted the search on the property. And just briefly, help the jury understand more, wh why do law enforcement need to maintain safety and security at a search scene? Anytime we're doing a search on anybody's property or home, uh, there's a risk that's an inherent risk to the the officers as they're conducting that search and so uh, whether that's agitated stand by bystanders or uh, the homeowners themselves and so we just like to to keep everybody safe by maintaining that control and we'll come back to your role in that capacity but i want to fast forward a bit um ultimately did you help find anything um on the property as part of that search Yes. What did you find? I found remains of Tylee, and uh, and then I observed the remains of JJ. And very briefly, can you explain to the jury before we go back? Uh, describe where those remains were found for each of them relative to the prop to the property. Judge, I probably need a little bit more foundation. Right, he was present at the scene. He just said he observed this on the same date. Overruled. So um, JJ was located uh, by the pond area of the property, and Tylee was found near a fire pit just east of the property. And for the jury's sake, uh, relative to the home on the property, where are the fire pit and where are the pond? So the, the fire pits east of the residence and the pond is north east of the residence. Would that be in the front of the property, the back of the property, the side? The rear of the property. So I'd like to come back now to your role in uh, safety. So can you be specific with what you were assigned to do in that role um, as the search when you arrived? So when we arrived, I, I helped maintain traffic as we, they were in the process of closing the road down in front of the house because multiple ve vehicles were going to be showing up. So I helped maintain some traffic control at the beginning. 
And then I stood by as detectives went and served that uh, warrant to the occupants inside the home. And, uh, and then my role was to just stand by um, and observe the occupants and their coming and goings as they, as they were free to move around as they wanted. And is that common in a search until something's found? Are the occupants allowed to, to remain on the property and sometimes move around? Yes. Prior to beginning your role on the search, uh, did you have the opportunity to identify Chad Daybell? Yes. How did you do that? Prior to this, just through investigation, through tips that we were receiving, even in patrol, we were helping field multiple tips that would come into the, the agency as we were looking for the children. And, uh, and so through that investigation, I, I'd seen multiple pictures and images of, of Chad Daybell. So is it fair to say that on June 9th that you were capable of identifying Mr. Daybell when, when you did? Yes. When you uh, took your role, when's the first time that, let me withdraw that. Can you tell the jury what time of day, the best you can recall, that you arrived on scene to help with the search? We arrived to the residence. I believe I got there just after 7 a.m. on the 9th. And can you also let the jury know, were there other law enforcement agencies involved? Yes, there, there were multiple law enforcement agencies involved. Could you just briefly uh, identify which agencies that were present? The ones that I knew were present at that time were the Rexburg Police Department, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office, and the FBI. Were there a large number of law enforcement present? Or yes. A small number? Yes. So... When you arrived, you were given this assignment. Um, please recall and then explain to the jury, when's the first time that you personally got eyes on Chad Daybell? So it was approximately 7.30 uh, when I observed him leave the residence uh, and walk over to his vehicle that was parked on the back driveway, the east side of, uh, of his home. He got in the vehicle and then moved his vehicle over to the west um, driveway area and backed his car into that driveway on the west side of the house. And if I could have you explain to the jury, Detective Wheeler, uh, when he moved the car to the west side driveway, can you explain to the jury what would his vantage point have been relative to the pond and the fire pit? Um. He may have been able to see the pond area a little better from that west front driveway where he moved the vehicle to. And so once he moved the vehicle, what, if anything, did you observe him to do? Um, he sat in his vehicle and was on the phone for quite some time. Just sat, sat there in his vehicle. So as you, as you saw him in the vehicle making phone calls um, while he was doing that, what's the next thing that you remember he did? So I remember there, there were multiple times that I could, because I was trying to keep eyes on him as well as the, the west side, the front part of the house. And there were multiple times I kind of saw him awkwardly looking over his right shoulder um, towards that east uh, or that north east corner of the property where the pond area was. Uh, and that's at that time where some of the investigators and cadaver dogs were working. And you just used the word awkwardly. Can you explain to the jury what you meant by awkwardly and what indicated to you that it was, it was awkward? The, the best way I can explain it is that for somebody to, to look over their right shoulder for you know, a long period of time. Um, and, and the reason I use awkwardly is because there was one time that he did exit the vehicle and kind of walked towards the rear of his vehicle and looked in that direction. And that's when I figured that he was interested or, or suspicious of something going on in that area. And, and I had made note to one of the other officers that was close by of that behavior. And so when he got out and walked to the rear of the vehicle, um, based on your observation, would that have improved his vantage point back to the pond? Uh, yes. What did he do next after he got out and walked to the rear of the vehicle? Um, so he got out, work, walked to the rear, kind of passenger side a little farther 
from the on the passenger side of his vehicle, looked around for just briefly, and then got back um, in his vehicle. What did he do next? I believe he was on the phone for just a little bit longer, and then he drove over to uh, Kitty Corner to his residence where his daughter was staying. Were you aware that that was his daughter's home at that time? Yes. Which daughter? I believe it was Emma. What did he do when he drove over there? Uh, I know that he had a conversation briefly out, outside and then had eventually gone into the home. I assume, could you see him while he was inside the home? I couldn't see him while he was in the home, though. No. How long do you recall him being in the home? It, approximately an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Eventually, did you see him come out? Yes. What did he do when he left that home? Um, I, again, was occasionally looking over to see if he was leaving or was needing anything and coming back to ask questions. And so I would look over there. And one of the times I did, I was talking to another detective and, and he came out of the home and, and appeared to be in a hurry. Uh, he, he went directly from the home to his car, had some items in his hand, and then, uh, and then left the property. Uh, and I remember at that time that there were assigned detectives responsible for following him if he went certain places and, and just kind of keeping an eye on him. And so Detective Schmidt was one of those detectives. And so I mentioned to him, hey, Chad's Chad's leaving. And about that time, um, other investigators that were in the back of the property came jogging over saying, hurry and go stop him. Okay. When you said leaving, did he leave on foot? S sorry. So he got in inside of his vehicle and drove going south. And, and I do remember the accelerating, you could hear the acceleration. And I thought, is he, is he trying to run? I remember that was a thought that went to my mind. And then when the other detectives said, hurry, go stop him, where I was in a marked vehicle, I uh, responded to that request. In your experience as a law enforcement officer, is it common for uh, someone who is the subject of a search at a home when they believe something is going to be found or is being judged. Judge, I'm going to object. This calls for speculation. Based on his training and experience, Your Honor. Judge, no, this is hold. Mr. Wixom, first of all, if there's an objection, let me think about it for a minute and respond before you start arguing against the objection. So please also for the court reporter, um, at this time, I am going to sustain that objection. Okay. So... You went and stopped him. Can you can you describe to the jury? Uh, you, you said he was, in your opinion, going fast. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, how far away from the home approximately was he before he was stopped? It was right around the Fremont, Madison County line where he stopped. Um, I couldn't give you an exact distance. Did you make any personal contact with him when he stopped? I did. And what did he say or do? So at, at the time, all I had was a request to stop him. I hadn't gathered any further information. Uh, the other detectives that had made that request were right behind me. And so I exited my vehicle and asked Chad to exit his vehicle and explained to him that he was, that I had been asked to stop him and that the detectives were on their way to talk to him. At that particular point, did you notice any change in his demeanor at all? Uh, he didn't ask any questions, wasn't way shocked or surprised that he got stopped um, and and complied to the requests that I asked of him. At that point in time, did any other law enforcement become uh, involved in contact with him? Yes. Who was it that you recall? At the time, uh, his rank was Lieutenant Ball and then uh, Detective Hermosillo. And there were a few other officers. I don't necessarily know their names or who they were that were at the stop now asking you to to recount for us what was the first thing that you remember law enforcement telling him so Judge, i'm going to object grounds it's hearsay sustained Judge, may i argue that go ahead it's not offered to prove the truth your honor it's just the effect on listener which would have been chad well the 
but the point you brought up in the question, what was the first thing you remember law enforcement telling him? So I think it's just directly calling for hearsay. So it is sustained. Once they, was there some interaction? Yes. Okay. Once that interaction occurred, were you ever instructed or did you ever take it upon yourself to arrest Chad? I placed handcuffs on Chad. And what, what did you do with him once handcuffs were placed upon him? Uh, he was told that he was being detained right now, and uh, he he complied. I correctly put the handcuffs on, checked for proper tightness, double locked them, and then put him in my patrol vehicle. During that interaction, are you aware? Was he ever advised whether or not there'd been a find on the property? Yes. What was he advised? That they had found uh, JJ. So, in your vehicle uh do you have camera system yes is is there any camera system inside of the vehicle itself yes we have three different cameras that are linked together one is inside where we put our prisoners and then one is the dash cam and then the one we wear which is our body cam the one inside uh where you put your prisoners what what, what do you refer to that as the in-car in-car camera your honor at this time um i believe by stipulation we have two proposed e exhibits one states uh 300a the second is 300b well first just to offer into the court they are a copy of the in-car uh, patrol cam for this day for this officer and then also the dash cam i believe we have stipulation to their admission all right, on 300A, it's been offered. Is there stipulation from the defense? Judge, there is for 300A and 300B. And, and as counsel correctly pointed out, one is the dash cam inside the vehicle. The other one is a, a, a camera that of uh, recording the same incident outside the vehicle by another officer. And, and correct me if I'm agreed. Yeah. So both of those by agreement, Judge, are being admitted. Or being or proposed admission. All right. Uh, exhibit 300A and Exhibit 300B are both admitted. Your Honor, with that, may I have permission to begin to publish 300A? You may. Thank you. And Your Honor, while I'm preparing this, I, I would just further want to note for the record. We likewise have a stipulation. These videos are each an hour and 50 minutes. I only intend to play approximately 15 minutes. We have an agreement between counsel that the state can play what they wish to and def our defense counsel can likewise play what they may wish to. All right. If you do that, Mr. Wixom, uh, if there is some identifying marker on there, either a timestamp on the video itself uh, so we can identify in the record precisely what portions were played, then please do that when you publish. Will do, Your Honor. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. If I can have just a moment, please. You know, I may mean, have just a moment. I'm just having a small tech issue. Oh, I'd be very quick. All right. Thank you. All right. The problem I'm having is this particular flash drive, and I prepared multiple, is not pulling up the file. It was moments ago. So if the court would like me to send this up, I have a, an alter original that I'd like to file, but it's, it is also is marked Exhibit 300A. Okay, well, the one that comes in will be the one that's published. We'll put it that way. So whatever you publish, that very drive needs to be the admitted exhibit. Will do, Your Honor. Thank you. Very well. Judge, if we need to take a break, we can do that if you'd like. Cool. Do you think you can get that going at this time? I'd rather kind of push through and get that before the morning break. Judge, I'm, I'm optimistic that we can get this going. I just 
Sure. We'll give you a minute here. Thank everyone for their patience, Judge. I think I've got it ready. Okay. So for the record, Judge, I'm going to advance the video to one hour and three minutes and three seconds approximately to begin playing, publishing that. Okay, and then when you uh, stop the video, please just note on the record the timestamp of when it stopped also. Will do, Judge. Thank you. Before I play this, Detective Wheeler, you see on screen um, a video that's put in front of the jury? Yes. Can you just explain and confirm what that is? That's uh, my patrol vehicle with Chad Daybell sitting in the back section where we have our detainees. And uh, to confirm also, is this the day of June 9th, 2020? Yes. Is So this is all relative to the search that you've been testifying about already? Yes. Thank you. You understand why that is, yeah. So you just stay here with them. Okay. Hi. They said that I could talk with you, and I didn't want you to be able. Judge, I'm going to stop at one minute, one hour, three minutes, and 17 seconds, and ask a question. Detective Wheeler, um, are you aware of who is the person that has just approached Mr. Dable in the vehicle? His daughter, Emma. I love you so much. I love you. Glad you came over. I thought they had taken you downtown already. I got about to the Fremont County line. I saw it as soon as you left me. Again, stopping at one hour, three minutes, and 38 seconds. Detective Wheeler, can you just explain to the jury? Um, the positioning of your patrol vehicle relative to the Daybell property and vantage points that could be seen from where Mr. Daybell is sitting as he sits now. So we're parked on the south side of the residence. Uh, I believe the road is 200 north. So we're just south of the residence and uh, facing west. And so if he were to look right outside of that open door, he would be looking at his house. And from his sitting position, would he have a vantage point to see the pond area in his on his property or the fire pit area on his property? From that position, he would just have to look over to his right shoulder and out that door kind of towards the back of the vehicle. What would he be able to see if he did that? He'd be able to see the the fire pit area for sure. And to be clear, whose remains were found in the fire pit? Um, that was Tylee. I'm going to go ahead and play this uh, continuously for a while, Your Honor. Chased you down, and then they came back. Ron, 
Ron? Just concerning the car. Huh? I know they. Oh, okay. What's that? Oh, just about the car. Oh, we'll take care of the car. We're going to take is it. Is she able to we'll, get it? Just, yeah, you can get that. We may have to go through the car if you're arrested in it. Right. The things we got to do. But then she can, she can have her bananas and her. I gave them first the food. <laughs> We'll try to get a card for a sport. Okay. You can eat it. <laughs> so, Eric, or Ron, so like my wallet, will that be able for her to pick up or could I turn that, that over to her right now? Is that in the car? Is that here? It's right here. It's up to you. I don't see. Can I look through it? Just sure. There's going to get marked. Uh, no, oh. Is there anything that you're going to need in that? Well, she'll be running my finances, I suppose. So that has a little money on it. You could. Okay. Just, so these are credit cards. So you're good if she just takes them. Yeah. Correct. Um, In the middle drawer on the left side in Mark's room, there's about $9,000 in two white envelopes. Okay. Um, so get that. Yeah, so we'll talk more about car payments and stuff, but you have that password. I do. I believe the Hawaiian. That's this one. First Hawaiian Bank, if you use that same password for this account, it's Chad Abel. Um, that's what else you can do. The producer there. This has nothing on it. It's like $6. That has to go away. So this, okay, in that same drawer, you can grab it. Is a piece of this that would fit in here, and it's got a company card, company business card, and so just make sure you get that. Um, and this is all in Mark's room. Yeah, I put. That in there, there's a like a pamphlet with um, a guy who's sitting in a car. It's for the Wells Fargo Auto Loan. That's the loan that they keep going on. Yeah, and so that we'll talk about. So this has, if you go to Tellmate, this is the card that's used. Okay. And so all you really do, you could probably just sign in as chad.daybell or start your own. I have an account that I've been talking with Lori on. Okay. But you could use this card. To add money to yeah. Her. And to her if needed. Okay. So, yeah, she'll need to still have commissary money. Usually puts 30 a week in there. So, and you can probably talk to her too. Okay. I'm trying to. I love you so much. Anyway. Cooperate with them as much as you feel. You know I mean? I'm stopping at 107.58, Your Honor. Detective, based on your knowledge, at this point that day in the search, had law enforcement asked for any cooperation from Emma? I can't testify to that because I don't know the extent of that. Fair enough. Then narrowing it just to you, had you asked her to do anything or asked for any kind of cooperation from her? No. Thank you. They've been kind to us today. I texted uh, John Cryer, so he has my number. He said thank you. Okay. 
Mm. A lot of the company stuff that pays for the house should be this auto pay still out of that uh, company account. No, I left five thousand in there. Okay. If you need some, come find me. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions you have? I think. Well, it sounds like you're not going to be out. I'm right. <laughs> so I think I'm going to. My landlord texted me just to feel bad for me. I think I'm going to come over here. That's what I needed you to say. Because, yeah, you and Joe. Stopping at 10904, Detective Wheeler. I just want to reiterate, we just heard that comment about he's not likely going to be out. At that point in time, you had not formally put him under arrest. Is that right? Aside from placing him in handcuffs and detaining him, no. But you didn't advise him of potential charges or anything like that? At that no. Point. And as far as you know, had any other law enforcement advised him of any specific charges that he may be facing? Not that I'm aware of, no. Thank you. And whatever Mark wants to do, <laughs> he should stay with either you. I'll take care of Mark. I'll take care of Lee. That's card. I will, Dad. <laughs> and they'll take care of me. <laughs> but, I'll take care of you the best we can. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so keep paying the mortgage out of the company. Oh, no. Okay. no, you can probably set it up, though. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, it's the Wells Fargo in that same pamphlet. The password, I'll look, but, but I've had a lot of success with mom stuff just saying, Will you help me? My mom <laughs> died. I'm pretty sure. Will you help me? My dad's in jail. Has the same it should be paid through July 1st. Okay. And I think the car is paid through July 15th. So you shouldn't have any bills to worry about. Um, yeah, I, I'm not coming back. So all that stuff that's in the baby room is Lori's and mine. The suitcases you'll see in the box. Just put it in the garage, I guess. After store it, see what happens. You, you guys can. Yeah, I can take that mattress from upstairs, I guess, do what you want, put the books back on the shelf. <laughs> We're going to make it through. I, I'm glad we could talk. I'm glad they let you come over. Yeah. They started crying and we sent him home. Do you want to talk to him? And he's like, can I? He said, he's just over there. It's like, oh, that changed this thing. So you probably saw us out there. Yeah, I was watching. <laughs> so, um, Boy, things will slow down for you guys to get left alone. And, but yeah, they'll let you move out of there. You just get over here. You know, get gosh, well, I, <laughs> I still feel better. I'd be moving too. That's what the spirit was telling me, but I didn't know how it all. I felt like I needed to learn more. Hmm. And now I get it. <laughs> So, yeah, this is essentially your house, and we'll talk to Don Pryor about the financial arrangement, but you should be fine for a while. I think long enough to get on our feet. I have a lot in that account with the other attorney, so that will take care of me for a while. And maybe we just do a refinance on the house for a home equity loan. Does it I don't think it's going to break us. I think that might be an option. Uh -huh. I might need to authorize putting you on the on mortgage. Account with you? Yeah. Just yeah. probably leave Joe off it. Yeah. Yeah, keep me on it with you. And Do you have accounts like that when you're in jail? 
I don't know. <laughs> I guess this is the part you get to that there's someone else in responsibility. Well, technically, Spring Creek Book Company's office, so you can. We'll manage it that way. We'll find a lot of And you have an idea. You can send things through Amazon to the jail? Yeah. So, like, I couldn't send you a package, but Amazon, if I ordered it through there, it could get to you. Yeah. So I'll only do that as you ask for stuff. The, the, Lori would know the Amazon account. I'll talk to her. Yeah. Because I have like $265 or so in there as gift certificates. So don't pay. Yeah, I won't. We'll get it figured out. It's like Cholo level five. <laughs> Same as in, for Lazelena at iCloud.com, I believe is the password. I, I don't know what they're going to. What you do with the computers? You could probably. It wasn't part of the search warrant. Are they? Do you know? Are they leaving the computers? Well, they were in my bag. They were in the car. We'll probably hold on to those and try to get them out. Okay, but things that are currently in the house will likely be left. I don't know what's been taken. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> but when we clear from here, whatever's in there, it, it'll be left. Okay. I talked to them and told them the bedrooms and to not mess it up. And they didn't seem like they were going to loom at all at all. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I get Garth and Beth moved, <laughs> and you guys come over here. It'll work out. It's all in the Lord's name. We'll talk. Use, <laughs> use that cellmate. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm Madison or Fremont. I think they're deciding that right now. But... That's what it sounded like. Detective Ball wouldn't, or Lieutenant Ball wouldn't say because he didn't know. <laughs> I'm sure Fremont has a cellmate system. So. Well, at Fremont, when I went in to get fingerprinted to teach, I was, like, in there, like, in the jail. <laughs> I was, like, in my, like, teacher clothes, just this little recent grab. So I don't know what they do. Sorry, y'all neighbors are going to be talking, but you just... <laughs> We're okay, Dad. Well, I... We're okay. You raised us that we're independent now with your wallet. <laughs> Glad you got that. Right, right. Get that money out of there. Probably just put it in your own personal account um, rather than have the cash laying around. Okay. So you need some. I think they've been okay with talking with her. I'm. I might not tell Joe about it either. About the money? Yeah. No. I have an account that's just in my name. I'm just going to put it in there. Wait. Well, Garth knows about that money. Um, Garth doesn't send this verbally to Joe. The checkbooks are in that drawer, too, if needed, but you shouldn't need them. At some point, you feel you need to clear out the Hawaii again or something. You can check my email. I check that computer, but my email, that Rexburg password is pretty much is that everything okay. for the bank or my email. Show low 1105, but I think I switched to all of those. Um, yeah, I talked to Lori for like two minutes, so she's aware they were searching. Was she surprised? She seemed bothered or disturbed. I mean, yeah, but, but um, 
So yeah, I'll be fine. Yes. I don't know what they told you because I asked Lieutenant Ball, where did you find the human remains? Because that's what they told me, is that they found human remains. And I said, well, there are several dogs that have been buried there. And he said, respectfully, Emma, I can tell the difference of human remains. And I asked, where was it? And he said, over by the pond under that tree. That yeah. it was in the ground and had boards over it. Yeah. Okay. But that... That didn't, Ace and I have walked all over over there. Yeah. That, and yeah. I can see in your face that surprised you. Because they asked, do you want to know what he's charged for? And then they went, well, actually, we don't have it. They said, we don't want to tell you something wrong. Uh, and so he told me that the, what they're looking at is that they found one body with the probable cause. There's likely two. So I asked, are you going to search the property forever until it's found? And he said, well, no, but we're going to look. And he said, because I said, what about, this is the home for my siblings and there's a baby. And he said, if you're not able to get back in tonight, we'll hook them up to the hotel. But you're not in trouble. I think they'll let them back. I, There's nothing in the house. They have Stopping at one hour, 19 minutes, and 17 seconds. Detective Wheeler, at that point, to the best that you can recall, was any of the search focused inside of the house? Not that I can recall. So the focus, as based on your memory, was all outside of the house? Correct. Okay. Focused on the house at all? We've kind of been looking in it in the yard. Yeah, I mean, Mark gets back. I would uh, Yeah, right. I, I think we're okay coming over. We just have to have law enforcement escort us onto the scene. And... Mm -hmm. We'll make it through. Mark deals with trauma weird that he just acts vaguely unimpressed. So I called him and said, Dad got arrested. And he said, well, I guess I should come home. <laughs> yeah, Mark, you should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't need to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Joe is home. He's home and he has Jake. Garth and Seth went in Garth's car to pick up Mark. So if you can get that. A couple seconds. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, just in the, let Mark use the Equinox or however you rearrange the cars. <laughs> but I. Yeah, it's all a matter of timing. It seemed to come together. But I love you. Love you very much. Thank you for letting me speak with her. Just, yes. Just when that cellmate wants I'm available to talk, we can talk. So, thank you. Love her. Now stopping at 121.16, for the record, I'm going to advance to 121.39. 121.36. Detective Wheeler, I just invite you to watch carefully what uh, Chad does, and I'm going to stop and let you explain any significance to that. Stopping at 121.47. Detective, um, what direction is Mr. Daybell looking when he just turned his head and looked back? It appears to me he's looking over to the fire pit area. And that is, in fact, where Tylee's remains were found? Yes. And you were present when her remains were found, is that correct? I was. 
Can you just briefly describe what your observations were when you were involved in that process? So I had been tasked with helping carefully excavate around the remains. Uh, the odor was was horrible. Um, the decay had set in. We were trying to get uh, pieces of flesh and bones as much kept together as possible um, until we were able to get most of it um, out and and laid out and packaged. Thank you. And, and to be clear for the jury, um, before you became involved in the actual search and, and helped find Kylie, what did you do with Chad in the back of your patrol car? So shortly after that, we were asked to transport him to the Fremont County Jail. So Detective Schmidt and I transported him to that facility. So then what did you after you what did you do after you transported him back to the jail? I was asked to come back to the scene, and, and that's where um, I was informed that they'd also found an area where... Uh, I'm going to object at this point. That's calls for hearsay. Uh, there, it sounds like there wasn't foundation for that, so I'll sustain that. So when you returned, what, what did you do specifically? I assisted in searching the area of the fire pit. And was there, were you the lead investigator at that point? No. Was there a lead investigator? Yes. And were you following directions from whomever that was? Yes. As you recall, who was that person? It would have been either Lieutenant Ball or Detective Hermosillo, but I can't say for sure. There's, there's no doubt you were a subordinate. Is that fair? No doubt. Uh, I think the last question, about how long were you back at the property in this process of recovering Tylee's remains? I had returned back to the property at approximately 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon after I dropped Chad off, and we were there the rest of that day and into the next day, the 10th. Approximately how many hours the rest of that day were you there? I had to estimate another five or six. I also assisted in setting up light trailers and things for scene security overnight. Sorry, light trailers. Your Honor, at this time, I don't have any further questions. I might ask as a courtesy to counsel if he wants me to leave my laptop and the exhibit in in case he wants to play from it. Uh, Judge, I can use my own laptop and, and I've marked as exhibit number 63 on my list a copy of the um, uh, the outside video that Officer Wheeler was involved in. There's two videos that we stipulated to. Just as a precaution, Judge, and it's not that I don't trust Mr. Wixom's uh, technology, but I'd ask Mr. Wixom to uh, stipulate to the admission of my uh, I, uh, exhibit number 63, which I'll make a representation is the, uh, the exact audio uh, video of uh, the outside of uh, the stop of Mr. Daybell. Well, we do not object, Your Honor. I, we believe it will precisely mirror and should precisely mirror Exhibit 300B from the state that you've already admitted. Let me let me be really clear on that then. So we've already admitted two exhibits. I really don't want a duplicate exhibit. Um, and it sounds like 300B would be the same as 63. That's what I believe based on the representations of counsel, yes. All right, counsel, if there's a way to use the same single exhibit i would prefer that to avoid any confusion in the record judge for convenience would um, mr wixom permit me to use my video of 63 for demonstrative purposes with this witness um counsel why don't you work that out i think what we'll do is take a mid-morning recess before you begin cross mr Pryor. and if you'll talk just for a moment we we've already admitted 300 b and so again i'm just uh, hesitant to have a duplicate video showing the same thing um i guess i'm not maybe i could be convinced but i, I think it's best practice to have one exhibit for one video Certainly so are. if your file works in his computer perhaps he can just use his computer with the admitted court exhibit 300b it's fine with me your honor okay if you'll take a look at that on the break let's go ahead and take our mid-morning recess uh let's try to reconvene again uh in 30 minutes
through the president's All right, thank you, Mr. Baylor. Please be seated. All right, we concluded our mid-morning uh, recess at this time then. Uh, Detective Wheeler still on the stand, still under oath for his testimony. And this will be the time for cross-examination. When you get to any exhibits, we did discuss those uh, in the sidebar. And Mr. Pryor, you can just move for admissions of any exhibits you have with this cross-examination. So, And Judge, uh, by stipulation of the parties, the parties are, are stipulating to Defense Exhibit 63, which represents the body cam of Officer Wheeler, which I don't think has been brought up yet. All right, uh, Exhibit 63 was clarified. It is not the same as what we previously said was 300B. So 63 is a new exhibit, and I understand the state's reviewed that. Is there any objection to Exhibit 63 being admitted? All right, Exhibit 63 is admitted then. Uh, Mr. Pryor, you can commence with your cross. And Judge, at the appropriate time, I'll ask permission to publish when I get to that point. Very well. Officer Wheeler, um, I, I just want to clarify a couple of things if we could. Yep. I want to clarify your role from uh, the morning when you arrived at 7 a.m. And your testimony is you did arrive at about 7 a.m. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And then what was your role immediately at 7 a.m.? So I assisted in securing the front roadway that goes in front of the, the property, 1900 East. And... Uh, and then just assisting with any crowd control and, and traffic control at that, that intersection in that road. Okay. Was there a significant crowd there at that point? No, there had not been right at seven. Okay. And approximately how many officers were there at the time? I can't testify to that. Okay. You did say multiple agencies, right? Correct. Those agencies would include the FBI? Yes. Uh, the Rexburg Police Department? Yes. Uh, the Fremont County Police Department? Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's yeah. Office. Give me. Sheriff's Office, yes. Madison County as well? Uh, I don't recall seeing any Madison County to my knowledge. Okay. Any other citizens there other than law enforcement who were present that you recognized? Not on the property, no. On the 9th? Not on the Nope. Okay. Okay. Now, um, your duties at the time back uh, in uh, on this date of 2020, what was your primary job other than this working on this case at that time? Uh, I was a sergeant in patrol, so helping with scheduling, shift coverage. So you would also go out on patrol and you would do, that's that was part of your role, is that right? Yes. Okay. Okay. And you're with, and at the time uh, you were, um, this is where I'm a little confused, at the time, you were with the Rexburg Police Department, or were you with a different agency? Rexburg Police Department. Okay. And as part of your duties, as part of your, your role as a sergeant, supervisory role, uh, you had a, a, a vehicle with a um, a cam a camera inside, right? Yes. And the camera also videotaped outside. Is that right? Yes. And as part of your role in a supervisory position with the Rexburg Police Department, you also carried a body cam. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And it was standard for you to carry a body cam as part of your role as in a supervisory position. Is that right? For patrol, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, in describing Fremont County, um, that's a rural part of town out near Mr. Da da Daybell's place. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Now, from 7 o'clock until what time did you leave your role as a... Uh, as, um, uh, your supervisory position in, in overseeing the uh, the comings and goings of people going onto the property? I would say when I was asked to make the traffic stop. So in other words, you were, you were, um, you were there at 7 a.m. And when you made the traffic stop, and again, what time was that? I believe it was approximately 11.20 a.m. Okay, so you were there for, so for approximately... Four hours and 20 minutes, your role was to supervise the outside of the property there and, and obviously keep an eye on Mr. Daybell, right? Correct. Okay. And from 7 o'clock until 11 o'clock, again, tell me what where Mr. Daybell's whereabouts were. 
So initially he got into his car, moved it to the west side of his home in the driveway, later took it over to uh, the house kitty corner from his property, and then left southbound on 1900 East. Okay, so from the time he parked the car in the driveway, how long did he sit in the driveway? This would be an estimation, oh, approximately an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so, if, and I'm not going to hold you to this. Yeah. Um, seven to eight o'clock is fair for him being in the driveway. He, he didn't exit the house till 7.30. Okay, seven to 8.30 in the driveway? Approximately. And then you saw him get in his car and you said that he was, he was, the tail end was backed into the, to the garage, right? At his property. Yes. So the tail end of his vehicle was to the back where the garage is. Correct. And how far from the back of the garage was Mr. Daybell's uh, um, bumper? Can you tell me? I couldn't. Was it close? Was it far? To the garage? Yeah. Back bumper to the garage? Yeah. You, I know you could walk between it. You could walk between it. Yes. So it, there wasn't a, there wasn't 30 feet, but it was closer to a, just a couple of feet to get behind. I can't testify to that. You don't remember? I don't remember. Exactly. Okay. That's okay. So then approximately about 8.30, you saw the car exit, and he drove over to um, uh, Emma's place. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did you did he have any contact with law enforcement up until that time? He had. He had? Yes. Do you know Sorry. who spoke with him? I don't know everybody that spoke to him when they made contact inside the home originally. So at some point he was advised that they found remains on his property. When did that take place? I, that didn't take place to my knowledge until he was stopped on the traffic stop. Oh, okay. So you're, and this is where I'm kind of confused. Um, and, and please, you know, educate me a little bit. So you said that Mr. Daybell was in Emma's house, his daughter's house for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And while he was in the house, you didn't see him try to run away or flee or do anything like that, right? Correct. He didn't have any knowledge of anything going on out on his property other than there were multiple police officers out there, right? I can't testify to that. I don't know what he could see from that yeah. home. Well, as a patrol officer, you understand, and as a sergeant, you understand that when someone is stopped for a traffic ticket, there's a certain amount of anxiety with people when that happens to them. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And would you agree then that if there are 30 police officers, 30 plus police officers showing up at your property and looking all over your property outside, not inside, but outside, would that tend to think that maybe you're a little curious about what's going on on your property? It could. And that doesn't mean that you're guilty of anything. That doesn't mean you have any knowledge. What that means is you're curious about why are there 30 officers wandering around my property? Wouldn't you agree with that? That could be the case. Okay, thank you. So then when Mr. Daybell left Emma's house, it's your testimony that he sped off. Is that what your testimony was? I believe it was. A, it appeared that he was speeding. It appeared he was speeding. Okay. So he doesn't have any knowledge about what's going on on the property at that point, right? No, I don't know that. Okay. He, does, he, he hasn't been told by anybody from the law enforcement agency that, he, uh, um, that they found something on his property. Is that fair? Not that I was aware of. Okay. And then in your testimony, he and, and maybe he wasn't speeding, maybe he was going fast. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So he wasn't racing off then, correct? He accelerated quicker than... Okay. And the, the speed limit on Salem Highway, and I've been on there a couple of times, is about 50 miles an hour. Starts slow, but when you get right on Salem Highway, it's a 50 mile an hour road. The council's testifying. Okay. I'll ask him, Judge instead. Hold on. Again, when there's an objection, I don't want an immediate argument back. I want a moment to rule, and that objection is overruled. Okay. So you can re-ask, and the officer can answer if he knows, knowing he's a law enforcement officer in okay. the area. Do you have knowledge of what the speed limit is on Salem Highway in front of Mr. Daybell's house? 50 miles an hour. 
Okay, so 50 miles an hour. So if you're pulling out of a driveway and Emma's, Emma's where she used to live, is right on Salem Highway, right? Correct. So it wouldn't be unusual for someone to pull into traffic and start accelerating into going uh, down the road, right? No. Okay. Now, um, I saw on the body cam, did you have a chance to go look over your body cam? Yes. Okay. And you did, when did you review that? A couple of days ago. Okay. I days. Now, I saw on the body cam, and, and if we have to, we'll play this for you, for everybody to, if you have trouble remembering something, but I saw on the body cam where you pull up and uh, Mr. Daybell stopped in a vehicle and you get out of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Yes. And then you walked up to, um, it looked like there were about four or five officers there, right? Uh, I know that there were two unmarked surveillance officers that were there with me at that time. Okay, but Officer Homer Seal was there. He arrived shortly after. Uh, Officer Ball was there. Arrived shortly after. And as soon as they arrived and you walked up, there was a discussion up to Mr. Daybell about where he was going. Do you remember that? I don't recall that. Did you have a discussion that he was going to visit somebody that morning? I did not. Did he have a discussion about uh, having a uh, uh, a meeting with his lawyer that morning? Not to remember my that? Knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Okay. So you have no recollection of the discussion of uh, anyone at that point pointing out to Mr. Daybell that he can't go see his lawyer. He, the lawyer can come to him. I do recall overhearing a statement about his lawyer. Okay. So now you remember the statement about the lawyer. So gleaming from that statement, uh, you were to understand that Mr. Daybell was in the process of going to see his lawyer, right? No. Okay. Judge, I'm going to ask to publish um, the body cam that's been previously admitted into evidence, and I'll see if I can get this to, to go. And that'll be Exhibit 63? Yes, Your Honor. There's a pretty dodge coming through, I believe, with the, on the fall of April. What do we got? Do we know what we have? I don't know what they want. They said, yeah, go ahead and step out here for us. They just asked us to stop you, so just come right here. They're going to come and chat with you, okay? Just stand right here. You don't have anything on you? No weapon, do nothing. Okay, Chad. Where can you engage? So we're in detain for a minute. We'll figure out what we're going to do. Well, your attorney can now come to you. Okay. So it's it's difficult to hear Mr. Daybell, but he commented to the officer when the officer inquired, you know, what he was doing. Do you now recall that? I couldn't hear what okay. he said. But the officer's response to Mr. Daybell was, now your lawyer can come to see you. Did you, did you recognize that? Yes. Which officer, by the way, said that? I believe that was Lieutenant Ball. Okay, so Lieutenant Ball is the one who said, your officer can come to you now. Is that fair? Attorney. Your lawyer can come to you now. Yes. Okay. So it appears that Mr. Daybell was in the process of going to see his lawyer that morning. I can't testify to that. Right. But according to Lieutenant Ball's comment, your lawyer can come to you now. It, it sort of presumes that, doesn't it? I could presume that he was trying to call or wanted to talk to his attorney first. Okay. And he was doing that in his car as he was driving away, right? I don't know that. Or he was doing that driving down the road instead of spending another hour in his house with Emma talking to his lawyer on the phone, he chose to instead, well, I'll just get in the car and- Objection, Your Honor, it's calling for speculation. Sustained. Okay.
And then after that point, you um, put Chad into handcuffs, right? Yes. Put him in the back of your car. Yes. And that was the video that we observed with uh, Mr. Wixom, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, do you recall, Mr. Daybell, on the video um, that you looked at with Mr. Wixom, where Mr. Daybell mentions, I don't know what they're charging me with. Do you record him saying that? Yes. Okay. Now, you also record him, or also recall him, excuse me, saying to Emma, cooperate as much as you feel. Remember Emma saying that? Yes. Okay. At what point during that process was Mr. Daybell advised that uh, they found a body on his property? Right prior to this clip right here. Okay. And at that, so at the point that he was having a discussion with his daughter, Emma, at that point, he didn't know what he was being charged with, correct? Not to my knowledge. He, nobody told him what he was being charged with, correct? Not to my knowledge. But it's a pretty serious allegation if you uh, uh, get put in a set of handcuffs and put behind a van and then suddenly they say, we found a body on your property, right? Could you repeat the question? That's a pretty serious allegation. Yes. In your traffic experience, that's not something that happens every day, right? Right. So at that point, Mr. Daybell is put in the back of the car, Chad's put in the back of the car, and, and, and Emma was allowed to talk with him, right? Correct. So we don't know what was going on in Mr. Daybell's mind, do we? I don't. Right. And we don't know what he's thinking, right? Right. But we do know that uh, he's been told, guess what? They found a body on your property, right? Correct. Okay. And you're in handcuffs, right? Correct. And then Mr. Daybell says, we're going to make it through this, right? Yes, sir. And he's talking to his daughter about financial, where he can come up with money, credit cards, uh, business accounts that he has, things like that, correct? Right? They were discussing those. Right. So the purpose of discussing that, we don't know whether he was doing that to try to figure out a way if he could post bond on a, uh, a release after he's being accused of this, right? I don't know that. You don't know that, right? We don't know what the reason for him uh, trying to get his financial financials in order, right? Right. Now, I I want to go back to the um, the driveway and. Originally, Chad was parked in a driveway from the, um, the south side. There's a driveway that comes in through the south, right? Yeah, southeast, southeast of the residence. Southeast of the residence. It's a long driveway that gets right into the middle of the what I would call the backyard, the lawn area of the yard, right? Correct. Okay. Now, that's where he originally was parked, correct? Yes. And would you agree with me that parked in that location gives you the best view of the fire pit and the the pond. I, I don't know about the pond because there was a shed there, but the fire pit. Clearly the fire pit, right? Correct. And you don't know about the pond because the pond is off back on a portion of the property set back a little further, right? Correct. And it's a distance to see it, correct? That's, that'd be fair, wouldn't it? Fair? Uh, distance is pretty relative, I guess. Okay. Well, how far from the, where Mr. Daybell was parked to looking at the tree where they found JJ's remains? I couldn't testify at an exact okay. distance. All right, fair enough. It's a distance, though. This isn't his backyard, right? You could you could see it easily. Okay, you could see it easily from that location right. from where he was. Distance-wise, that amount of distance. Okay, but the remains of both of these children were found in the pasture area, right? Yes. So if we say what I'm talking about, the backyard, would you agree with me that the backyard is where this driveway is and where the, the, the lawn is? That would be really the backyard. Would you agree with that? That's landscaped as grass, yes. Right. Okay. And then beyond a, beyond a fence is the fire pit. And then further down 
off in the far, which would be the north east corner, is a tree with a with a pond back some ways away from the house, right? To the to the north of the fire pit, right? So, I'm. This is what I'm struggling with. This is where I'm having some difficulty. If you have such a good view of the fire pit and the pond with the tree where JJ was found, if your purpose is to observe and see what's going on for some nefarious reason, why would he move? I believe he was advised to so they could get crime scene stuff in and out of that driveway. Okay, so he was told he had to get out of there. I believe so. Okay, do you know who told him that? I don't. Okay. So then he drives out and goes in front of the house in the driveway. Correct. There's no other place to go. He has to go in the driveway, right? If he wants to remain at the house, yes. Right. And it's your testimony that he was looking around a little bit at that point, right? Correct. Okay, so, you know... um, He wasn't emotional at that point, right? I couldn't, I didn't have a good vantage point to okay. determine that. He, he didn't have a, a look of fear on his face at that point. Is that right? Not that I could see. Okay. He didn't have a look of nervousness or tension or anything like that, did he? I believe that he did. You believe he did? Yes. Are you basing that on him turning his head and looking around? Multiple times. Okay. How many times is multiple? There was four or five and then him exiting the vehicle. Okay. Okay. So if someone is on your property and there are 30 police officers digging around on your property, you don't think someone would be curious about what's going on on your property? That's why I said that I believe he was nervous. Okay. He was curious. It could be both. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. But then he didn't run at that point, right? No. He went over to his daughter's, right? Correct. And he was there for an hour and a half, almost two hours, right? Correct. And then we just saw the video. He got accelerated a little bit, 50 miles an hour on Salem Highway. And when he stopped, he was planning on going to see his lawyer, right? I don't know that. Okay. Well, why would Lieutenant Ball say... Um, he's going to have to come to you. Is, was that Calls for piece? speculation, Your Honor. Sustained. Lieutenant Ball said to him, your lawyer's going to have to come to you, right? Something along those lines, yes. So there was at least a discussion about going to see the lawyer, right? I don't know that. Okay. You just think that was an, a statement Lieutenant Ball would just throw out there? Judge, this has been asked and answered. It's a pure speculation. The witness doesn't know. I'll move on, Judge. Well, Again, I'd like to be allowed a chance to rule on that, and it is sustained as asked and answered. So do move on, Mr. Pryor. Okay. Now, uh, after you um, put Chad in the back of the car and and what we talked about with Emma, talking about the finances, and uh, there was a time when Emma made a comment that um, I can tell by your expression that you didn't know what was going on out there, something to that effect. Do you remember hearing that? Yes. Okay, and you saw Chad's eyes when they talked about the, the, the body and his expression. So he had a reaction to that surprise. Would you agree with that? I couldn't see that. Okay, but obviously we have the video and we can make our own determination at some point, right? Sure. What the reaction was when he's told about a body that, that was being found. Okay. So then subsequent to that time, after Emma left, um. Uh, if you look at the um, the outside camera of the the premises, Chad at one point you talked about this looked back, right? And you said that was to towards the fire pit, right? There were multiple times that he looked back towards that area. Yes, but if he was looking back, if you look at the position of the car, isn't it true? that he was actually looking back at his daughter walking away and officer Dave hope behind the vehicle. I don't know. You don't know what he was looking at. No, I don't know where Emma was at. She lives in front of the vehicle. So I don't know why she would be behind it. Okay. And then the, and then the, the video speaks for itself though, as to what exactly Chad was looking at. Right. 
that shows what direction he was looking at. Okay. On the outside body, uh, the outside uh, cam of, of your vehicle, right? In the front? I, I don't know what outside cam you're talking about. The camera that was recording the uh, the encounter from the outside of your vehicle. My body cam? No, there's there were two cameras there. The front there car camera? Front car camera. And then there was the one inside the car as well, right? Correct. Okay. But the cameras will speak to themselves as to where Chad was looking, right? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I and correct me if I'm wrong, and, and I may be mistaken, um, but I thought you previously testified that by looking straight out the window, the way Chad's vehicle was positioned, that looking straight out the driver's or the passenger side window or the window he was in would be right directly at the fire pit. Isn't that what you testified to? His residence. Okay. So you're telling me that by looking behind or back, uh, he's looking away from his residence. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. So again, what time did you uh, drop Chad off at the, the jail? I believe it was approximately 12.45. Okay. And and I, I just need to clarify something else. Um, How have you been on that property before? Prior to that day? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. But you saw cadaver dogs there uh, on that day? Yes. Okay. And again, what time did you get back from after you dropped Chad off? Uh, back to the residence, approximately 1330, 130. And for those of us who aren't in the military, Sorry. that'd be 130, right? Approximately 130 p.m. Yeah. Okay. I can do that math, I think. Um, and then you were there until what time at night? I don't recall the exact time until we decided to okay. convene until the next day. And your primary goal at that point was excavation. Is that right? After I had returned, they reassigned me to help with the property. Okay. And, and what role specifically? Were you at the fire pit or were you at the uh, the, the tree back behind the pasture there? Primarily the fire pit area. Okay. And, and do you recall who was with you at the fire pit? There were multiple people. When you say multiple, how many are we talking about? I can't. I don't even want to estimate. There that was many? there was people coming and going. Oh, okay. So I don't recall who was there and when. And they were handing off the shovels and the tools used to do that? Uh, not not necessarily handing them off, maybe expanding areas to look look at and sift through. And at one time, how many people would you say were digging around the fire pit with you? I don't want to testify to that. I don't know. You don't want to testify or I, you don't I don't know? know. I don't know for sure how many. Was it more than two? Yes. Was it more than four? Yes. Was it more than eight? I don't, no, I don't know. Okay. And were you using just shovels? No, they had, they had sifters, hand tools shovels so shovels sifters hand tools anything else or is that it uh, not that i can recall other than digging in the dirt in the fire pit was there any other obstruction in the fire pit that you recall having difficulty with repeat that question any difficulty in digging in the soil when you were at the fire pit where we found tiley's yes remains. where tiley's remains were found just how careful we wanted to be okay so there were no boards, there were no obstructions, there were no rocks or anything like that. It was it was soil that you had to dig through. Is that fair? There were some clumps of of rock or hard. Yeah, but nothing else, just small clumps. Not that I recall. Okay, and, and were you there primarily for a, a significant amount of the time in, of the excavation? Of uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. And Judge, I, th I think that's all I have. I think that's all I have at this point. Um, all right. If we could uh, have the published exhibit removed from the screen there, Mr. Fire. Did we note on the record the time frame stamp when that stopped? We may not have. 
109, 103, it looks like, Judge. Okay. A minute you. three is looks like when it was stopped is what I look like I have, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll let counsel return then and we'll have redirect Mr. Wixom. Detective Wheeler, um, you were asked several questions by Mr. Pryor about, in your experience, different reactions that people have in terms of levels of nervousness. Yes. And he asked you a question about whether or not someone might typically get nervous with a simple traffic stop. Correct. Can, I answer that? Can you just explain, is, is that your common experience as a law enforcement? Uh, yes, I think that most people do get a little nervous uh, when they get stopped by police. Yeah. In your experience, when someone's about to have a serious crime, such as bodies on their property found, would they normally get nervous? I would assume, yes. Would they be curious and looking back at the property where the bodies were buried? Yes. So if they, oh, sir, they, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you just speak more directly? Oh, I'm sorry. Mind? We yep. kind of moved over and sorry. we're not getting your signal. In your experience, Detective Wheeler, if someone is about to be discovered in a crime, about to be caught in a crime, have you ever experienced someone just acknowledging that and just surrendering because they know they're caught? It, it is common for suspects when confronted with possibly getting caught to try to distance themselves from whatever they're getting. What, let me ask you a, a, di a different way. So have you ever experienced a situation where evidence was being found immediately and the reaction of the suspect was just to accept it and not resist or argue or, or react in any way? Judge, this oh. overruled. Go ahead now. Ask Re that we repeat that question. Have you ever, in your experience as a law enforcement officer, ever been in a situation where evidence was about to be discovered that incriminated the suspect, and they they just reacted calmly without any nervousness and just basically acquiesced? Very few times. But it has happened. Yes. Mr. Pryor asked a question about when Mr. Daybill was looking back at the property and he was looking curiously. Do you remember that question? Correct. Yeah. Would you, would you say that another reason why someone might be curious about all these law enforcement digging on your property could be that you were aware they're about to find bodies that you knew were buried on your property? Could that cause curiosity? Yes. Mr. Pryor asked you a question about the speed in the roadway in front of Mr. Daybell's property. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. And again, what was the speed on that road? 50 miles an hour. And I think you testified that it may not be abnormal for someone living on that street to drive out into the street and then quickly accelerate to 50 miles an hour or more. Correct. Yeah. Would you disagree that someone who believed that bodies that were buried on his property might be a reason in addition to that, why they might quickly get on the roadway and drive away quick, quickly and accelerate like you've talked about? Yes. There's been some discussion as well. There's some questions from Mr. Pryor about the fire pit. 
And I just want to flesh that out a bit. You testified earlier that you were present when Tylee's remains were recovered. Yes. And you participated in that. Yes. We've talked about the fire pit. Are you familiar with, with what's been called a pet cemetery on that property? Yes. Our world. Can you explain to the jury, were any of Tylee's remains found in the pet cemetery? So when I became involved, I don't know what the team had designated as cemetery and fire pit. So I can't testify to where exactly they had des designated those points, but they were in that area that I assisted. Did you become familiar with at least generally where the team was, what they were calling was the pet cemetery? Sustain. Did you receive any knowledge based upon what the team effort was, what had been designated by law enforcement there as what they were going to call the pet cemetery? Mr. Wixson. Because I'm asking based on his knowledge simply if he knew what law enforcement designated as that area. Mr. Pryor, please enter the microphone. Sure. And in response to that, that knowledge would only be obtained through hearsay. Okay. You know my objection, Your Honor. What would be the exception, Mr. Wixom? Judge, I'm not offering to prove it for the truth of the matter as to where the pet cemetery was. I'm simply asking this witness if he knew that area, generally speaking, as they were conducting their investigation for the remains, uh, the, the area that they were calling that. It's, but that's all. Fair Judge, out. and it's absolutely being asked for the truth of the matter asserted. That's exactly why he's asking it. Uh, the objections overruled. I find it as an exception to the hearsay rule, and the officer can answer the question. I was familiar with the area called the pet cemetery. And where was the pet cemetery in relation to the fire pit? It was to the west and to the side a little bit, not very far away. So in your earlier testimony, when you talked about um, the direction that Mr. Daybell was looking in the back of your patrol car, do you remember that testimony? Yes. And I think you testified you used the term fire pit. Yes. Can I just... Be clear for the jury, was the pet cemetery in the same general direction as the fire pit where Mr. Daybell was looking? Yes. You were asked some questions about the use of shovels and tools uh, in attempting to recover Tylee's remains. Yes. Could you explain a little bit more to the jury um, what kind of cautions and efforts were made to uncover those remains? The majority of what I did, I was on my hands and knees with brushes and little hand tools, removing portions of dirt away from the mass that we had found. Without being too graphic, when you were remo removing those portions of dirt, did you personally um, find any portion of her remains? Yes. Can you describe those remains that you'd found? Judge, I'm going to object. Basis. He doesn't have the knowledge to, to identify remains, Judge. I haven't heard anything foundation-wise to, to allow him to make that kind of an assessment. Well, on the objection, Mr. Ricks, I'm a, he can testify to what he found. I don't know that there's enough foundation to uh, accurately identify who was found. Okay. Detective Wheeler, uh, did you find what you believe to be human remains? Yes. Can you be specific about what you are finding? We found a, a portion of a skull and started to uncover that. Um, then there were there was flesh and other bones um, in a bucket, melted. And at the time that the search was being conducted. Were you aware of the the names of the people whose remains they were looking for? Yes. What were those names? JJ and Tylee. At any point in time, besides the remains of Tylee and the remains of JJ, were any other human remains found on the property? No. So going back to the method and the manner that you used 
to recover these remains. You, you said, I think you said, you used a brush at, at points. Brushes and hand tools. Why did you use those specific types of tools? To try to keep what we were uncovering together without falling apart. Not to be oversimplistic, but but why is that important in this kind of a recovery in the ground of remains? Why do you need to do that? I think it assists in identification purposes and evidence collecting so we don't lose anything. Is it fair to say that that's a careful process? Yes. You were asked questions about passing off shovels or different shovels and tools. When you were engaged in this recovery of her remains and you observed other law enforcement, did you ever see anybody in any way haphazardly use those tools? Judge, objection, mischaracterizing the, the, the question and the testimony. Overruled. Not, I didn't see anybody using them. I don't know the word that you used. Could you repeat the question? Sure. Did you see anybody using them in any way that was haphazard or not cautious? No. So at no point when the remains were being recovered, did you see any conduct by law enforcement that wasn't conscientious and careful? No. As a, as a, I think you're a 17 year law enforcement veteran. Is that correct? 18. 18. Thank you. Are you familiar with the term consciousness of guilt? Yes. Judge, I'm going to object at this point. We're going well beyond the scope of cross examination. I like a quick sidebar. All right. Thank you, counsel. After the sidebar, the court is uh, sustaining the objection, and I'll move to strike that last question. So, Mr. Wixom, if you could ask a different question, please. Thank you. Detective Wheeler, if someone gets in a car and flees quickly or appears to, what can that be indicative of? Judge, calls for speculation. Overruled. Could be that they have knowledge that something is going to be found or some sort of guilt. Would that go back to that term, consciousness of guilt? Judge, can we approach <clears throat> sidebar, please?
All right, after sidebar, uh, the court is again striking that last question. Mr. Wixom, if you'd move on to another question, please. Certainly. Just a, a last couple of questions. Can you explain again the timing of when Mr. Gable had left the property and as to when you'd found out that JJ's remains had been found? Later, I had discovered that it was simultaneously, meaning as Chad was leaving, detectives were coming around the house and saw him leaving and advised me to stop him. Judge, I'm going to move to strike. It's hearsay. <clears throat> Uh, response, Mr. Wixom. Your Honor, I, I can re-ask the question. Very well. Yeah. When you had stopped Mr. Daybell and had him get out of the car and come back to the back, you indicated that that's when he was met by the four or five officers, including Lieutenant Ball. Is that, is that right? Correct. Yes. And we just saw the video where the first thing Lieutenant Ball said was, we found JJ's remains. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. That happened how long after Mr. Daybell had gotten his car and drove away? Just prior. Moments, seconds, what's your best recollection? I wasn't back there, so I don't know the exact time they located him. But I'm asking the statement from Mr. from D Lieutenant Ball to Chad, right? That timing, how how long was so that statement made to him? How much earlier had he driven away? Oh, just within minutes. And when you were there helping with Hailey's remains, I think you testified earlier. That but you weren't directly involved with the recovery of JJ's remains. Correct. But you were on scene and you made observations about that. Yes. Are you aware of whether or not pursuant to that search warrant or the way the search was conducted, was law enforcement looking inside the house for remains? I'm not aware of that. Okay. I can't testify to that. The whole time where you were there, did you see any law enforcement going inside the house? Just at the beginning when they made contact. And then after that, did they all go outside? Yes. Okay. So as far as you are aware, all of the search was happening outside on the property. Yes. Okay. Is there any question that you have as to the direction that Chad was looking on your patrol cam? when he looks back over his right shoulder. What what direction was he looking? Judge, that's a compound question. And he's asking a, an affirmation from this witness. I'm going to object. Well, on the compound, it's sustained. What direction was Chad looking when he was looking over his right shoulder in the, patro uh, in the uh, patrol cam? In the direction of the fire pit and pet cemetery. You were asked about this several times by Mr. Pryor. Is there any question that regardless of what else he may have been able to see or look at, that that general uh, direction was right at the pet cemetery? Judge, this has been asked and answered by this by it's counsel. Sustained. Thank it's you. asked and answered. No further questions, John. All right. Judge, there were some issues that were brought up. I'd like the opportunity. In limited scope, all out, Mr. Thank Fryer. you, Your Honor. Now, officer, I heard an interesting comment from you. Um, as you were testifying, you made a comment that I subsequently learned. Did you talk to anybody about your testimony uh, at, the, at the break in this case? No. You didn't talk to any other law enforcement? No. So when you said that you subsequently learned, when did that knowledge come to you? Uh, what are you referencing? I'm, I'm referencing the fact that you subsequently, now oh, I forgot what the context of that was. We're going to move on, Judge. Um, and it may come to me.
I want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, when you say that Mr. Daybell left when he learned about finding remains on uh, his property, was that when he was parked in the driveway? In his residence? Yeah. I, when he left Emma's residence in his vehicle shortly after I learned that JJ was body was found. Okay. So what, and that's what I'm trying to clarify a little bit. So Mr. Daybell was parked in the driveway. Then he went over to Emma's residence and it's unclear. And I understand that, that we don't know whether he was there for an hour and a half or for two hours in Emma's residence, right? Yes. And at that point, he didn't know anything about anything being on the property that has been located by law enforcement at that point. Would you agree with that? I don't know what he could see from there. Okay, but you know, he has he wasn't told by anybody that there was that they found anything at that point, correct? Not by me. Right. Or anybody else. Not that I know of. Right. And then when he gets in his vehicle and he drives away, um, the prosecutor um eloquently used the words fleeing. But we don't know what he was thinking at that point, do we? No. And only after he was stopped by you and those other several officers and notified what was going on. That's when he learned about it after he drove away and after he had driven down the road, correct? I can't testify to what he knew. Okay. But he was told about the, uh, the remains at that point. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. All right. I have nothing else, judge. Thank you. All right. That will conclude the testimony of this witness. Is this witness going to be recalled by either side? I may recall him judge. We may call him later by the state, Your Honor, but he can be excused for today as far as the state is concerned. All right. Well, Detective Wheeler, if you are to be recalled, again, you're still under an exclusionary order, so you are not permitted to view any of the footage of the trial, the testimony that's being live streamed or discuss your testimony further until you return to testify. Otherwise, you may be excluded from testifying. So please keep that admonishment in mind in between now and when you may be recalled in the case. 